All right, guys, we're going to get going. Welcome back to the Never Chuck Gym. Going to have a good workout today. We're going to do floor and pommel horse later on. Going to start with a warm up. We're going to be joined at 5:30 by Akash Modi. Okay, guys, this is a video of a routine by Akash Modi. This is at World Championships. A significant accomplishment in itself, but he went to three of them. Potentially, he's one of the favorites to make the Olympic Games coming up. He was a Nissan Emory Award winner, similar to Steven Natarozic, who's also from Region 6, who won it as a specialist this year. And Akash was also the NCAA All-Around Champion. And just a really classy guy. This is his P-Bar routine at World Championships. And obviously he's totally dirty. But he does one skill at the end of his routine that as a lifelong gymnast, it's almost like the impossible skill where so many people have tried it and people have talked about it. Do you think you can do it? Do you think you can do it? And somehow Akash is able to do a full twisting double back dismount off P-bars. And one of the things that he does that's super unique is the technique that he uses is an absolute full out. Right here. A back duck and a full. And he's so good at doing it. Right? He does it a slow-mo here as well. This is not an easy skill right here. But you'll notice that he is so patient with the stand-up off the bar. Right? So patient. Then there's another thing that I want to kind of talk about. Maybe he can tell me how important this part is, but... I notice here, and Yusuf, we were working on this. It looks so similar to what the guys do with bouncing the bar on a Tkachev. Watch this, Yusuf. One, two, three. And he really loads the bar up like a spring. And I don't think I've ever seen anybody do it as effectively as Akash does that. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce you guys all to Akash Modi. You're on mic, so feel free to say hello to the guys, Akash. Hey, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me here. It's awesome to be here. Uh, first question to you, Akash, today is... Um, Steven Natarozic won the Nissan Emery Award, and he was a Region 6 guy. I'm going to put this back on. A Region 6 guy, and he's the first individual who won the Nissan Emery Award, and it's certainly a huge, gigantic honor. Um, I know that you won that award when you were in college. Can you mm -hmm. just, what was it like to win the Nissan Emery Award? Definitely. It, it was, it was kind of just like a, a compilation of my accomplishment accomplishments. Um, it was just um, a really awesome feeling to to know that you know I've I've kind of worked towards this to be the best I could be, and I was being awarded um, for being the best in that uh, senior class that year. And it, it was really really an awesome feeling to to you know be around my friends, my my peers, all of these guys that I've grown up with for years. Um, and everyone was able to um, really, really show, you know, how how much they enjoyed uh, my gymnastics, and and I was able to to kind of give a little speech also and say how much gymnastics has meant to me and what it has really done for me. Um, and it it really it, it really is a group effort, you know. I I wouldn't be where I was without my team, my coaches behind me and all the friends on all the other teams that were, you know, maybe rooting against me at some point, but they still thought of me as a friend and, and helped me whenever I needed uh, help and, and kind of brought me to the point that I got to. And for Steven, it's, it's even more amazing. You know, I'd, as an all around gymnast, you get six chances every competition, you know, you have six events, you can try again on one routine on the next routine. If you've screwed up one routine, but um, I think it's just a testament to how hard Steven has worked on Palm Horse and how, how focused and dedicated he's become. 
um, to to you know perfecting his pommel skill. That uh, you know it, it it really shows how much um, how far he's come from um, being you know a, just a one event guy out in high school to he won the NCAA championships on pommel horse his freshman sophomore and uh, it was likely he was going to win this year too. Unfortunately, of course, the NCAA championships weren't held. Um, but he, he, you know, and he made the national team as a one event guy and made, uh, you know, went to the World Cup series uh, all over the world and ended up winning one of them in Melbourne. It just shows how, you know, how great he was on that event and what an asset he was to, you know, Penn State, of course, but also to the country. Is there a difference in the camaraderie that you feel with uh, the national team versus being uh, in a college NCAA program? Uh, so with the with the NCAA program, the big thing is that we all train together almost every day, and a lot of us even live together. And so it's you know it's it's like a real family because you're 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 with each other every day. You go through the hardships in practice every day, and um, you know, you, you get to you get to see each other outside the gym all the time, but with the national team, there's there's that bigger goal of of you know representing your your country and aiming for that world championship medal, team medal, the the Olympic team medal, that kind of elevates that team aspect because even though we're all you know we're all from separate gyms, separate areas of the country, um, we all have that one goal in mind, and you know, nobody's really in it for themselves. Of course, everyone wants to make the Olympic team, but nobody's going to say, hey, put me on the Olympic team over this other guy because uh, if, even though he is better than me, because we all want to be the, the, you know, the four best guys, and that's the reason we were chosen to be on the Olympic team so that we have the best chance as a country to medal. Um, so we're all pushing each other that way. And there's there's really no ill will there. It's you know every everyone wants the best for everyone else because the the only way to have a good team is if uh, the guys that are on the team are being pushed by the guys just below and even farther below um, that didn't make the team. So I'm going to show you a couple of uh, frames. Uh, it's of the skill that we talked about um, in the video. Your dismount. Mm -hmm. Can you can you talk to us about the bar bounce that you do beforehand? Yes, yeah, it's it's a very very important part. Um, it's it is very very similar to like you were saying the Takachev tap on a high bar where you want to kind of get some bounces, and I find that you know I I do one two and on the third bounce I go for the dismount, and it really just primes me to to open my shoulders up as much as I can. So I lift my body up to the highest point possible and then use that to, to get that little bit of extra um, gravity to, you know, the height from the, uh, from the top of the bounce to, to help me swing through the bottom and really get the most power I can. Do you notice that the technique that you use in regards to the full out, um, has that helped you in other areas um, of... Of gymnastics I mean it, it really if you look at the way that people are doing say even rings dismounts or even the way that especially Donnell Wittenberg but um, also just huge high bar dismounts it seems as though they finished the first flip first without any twist at all um, Eddie Penev is another example he just yes. comes off the bar stares at the ground and then does a full um, can you talk about what you think about the word half in half out compared to the technique that you use? Yeah, uh, well, I think that is a very good um, technique to use, you know, like I'm doing here on the parallel bars where I come all the way up on the first flip and then I do the full at the end. Uh, but I, I think parallel bars is, is kind of different in that there's not really much of an up phase. You know, you're mostly just going down and there's really not much time. And so I've found that with this full out technique where I'm doing, you know, the sit up on the first flip, it helps with two things. The first is that I can really focus on getting the flip going and move, making the flip move very fast because 
one of the hardest parts I would say is just getting two flips done without without you know grabbing your body somehow. Um, and then the full out means that I, I'm not wasting time with the twist and I'm not doing a slow twist. I get to do a really fast twist where I just crank it as much as possible and, and um, you know, finish the twist very quickly so that I can open out and, and try to see the ground that way. Now, it seems as though your emergence on the scene um, came probably within the last 10 years or so, really like stepped up some like the productivity. Um, where, how did you switch from junior, junior program gymnastics to the senior program gymnastics? And the follow-up question would be, um, can you just explain the difference in terms of maybe like coaching that you get at the junior level versus the instruction, maybe even more, it's like conversation that you get at the senior level. What, what's the difference in coaching style that you experienced? Yeah, Sure. So on the first point, um, I'd say I, I first kind of jumped onto the national scene in 2011 at the JO Nationals where I came second on the first day of competition. And the year before, I was somewhere around 110th to 115th place. So I was kind of, you know, not very good. Um, but I'd, I'd always, you know, my coach had always had always prepped me with with hard skills and we were always pushing routines, pushing difficulty uh, while trying to, you know, uh, get that execution and most importantly, the consistency down. And the the two things that I feel like I didn't have before I jumped onto the scene in, in 2011 and, uh, with the second place at nationals was uh, the consistency and kind of jumping off that was the confidence. It was because I wasn't so confident in my own ability that I didn't really have the consistency and I didn't, you know, I didn't perform in competitions as well as I think I could have. And so in 2011 for that JO Nationals, I, you know, I'd finally been doing my routines, the same routines all season. And I'd done them so many times that I, I felt like, okay, this is my time. I'm going to hit all six routines and I'm going to do it as well as I do it in practice. And that's exactly what happened. And, you know, people went from not knowing my name at all to being like, Oh wow, this guy is second place at nationals. He's, he's got some good hard routines and, and he's pretty good. Um, and ever and you know, since I got that second place, it kind of reinforced to me the that confidence that I am this good, uh, I can be this good, and so I should be this good. Uh, and then I'd say the big thing between club and um, college gymnastics is, is a lot of the expectation. In club gymnastics, it's kind of just, you know, if you, if you don't make a turn, it's okay. You know, chop back up and go make another turn. But with college gymnastics, and as I'm getting older too, I realize, um, you know, the coach expects much more from you with, with every single turn, even your basic turn, your first turn on the, on the event, you know, there's, there's a minimum expectation that you keep good form. Um, and then the next expectation is, is, you know, the, the level of quality of, of the, the technique of the skills when you're doing routines and halves. And it's, it's, you know, if you have one chance, if you're going to salute a half routine to me, then, you know, that half routine better count, you better make it feel like you're in a competition and this is your one shot. So um, that was a big part of a big, like part of the mental jump for me. And the, the physical jump is I think the harder part between club and uh, college and elite gymnastics. And it, it's just a lot more strength and conditioning than um, I've ever done before in club gymnastics. And it, it, it goes a long way. I, I went from barely having a straddle planche on rings to having two Maltese's and two crosses in my routine now. Um, and it, you know, it, it's a hard journey, very, very hard, but very worth it. So how has the delay in the Olympic games changed your, like usually a four year macro cycle is now changed to like an added fifth year. Um, is that proposing huge workout um, 
restructuring for you or does it actually give you a little time to rest and recuperate to make it so that you have um, a better opportunity to make a final push towards the Olympic Games? Yeah, it's it's a little bit of both. Uh, so, you know, the last few months I was basically on, on details and execution work. I had the same routines. Um, I think I added one new skill on on uh, maybe floor since world championships and, uh, you know, nothing else. Everything, all my routines were going to stay the same and I was going to work only on execution, which is the usual plan. Usually about a year out from the Olympics, you solidify your routines and you keep those and just, just work on perfecting them. Uh, now that this has happened, you know, I, I have another year and three to four months. And so um, I took about three to four weeks, to pretty much totally off. I did some basic uh, stretching and minimal core and arm work, but mostly I took, I took totally off. And coming back now for the last two, three weeks, I've been actually working more on, um, on trying to build strength and kind of build new skills. So I've been, I've, you know, I, I always wanted to learn like a, uh, flare to handstand on floor. And so now I have the time to work that because you know, I don't, I don't have, uh, routines to do for the next few months. Um, I'm working on my inverted cross strength. And so I have some weights that I'm, I'm doing, uh, inverted cross pulls on there. So I, you know, I can try to get new skills like that. So I only have one more. I think that somebody else might have a question for you. Um, sure. Him is Sam. He's right. from New Hampshire. And uh, I'm going to put him on mic right now so he can ask his question. Uh, I've been um, working on a Japanese press. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any tips? So where so are you struggling the most for your Japanese press? Uh, I'm bending my arms. You're bending your arms. Okay. Something that something that I found that helps me a lot is that I'll just take maybe uh, five to eight pound weight. Maybe five pounds is is pretty good. And if you just put them over your head and hold them out here, and you can just hold that for you know maybe 20, 30 seconds, um, it really it really helps you. First of all, you have to make sure your arms are straight. And so it'll help you, you know, figure out how to get in that position with your arms straight. And it'll help you to, to build up the muscles in your shoulders that you need to be able to hold that Japanese press. Uh, so that helps a lot. And then and you, sh you should play with the way your hands are facing. Because I've seen some people do it with their hands facing forwards. And some people do it with their hands facing to the side. And I've found that my hands facing forwards is actually easier for me um, and I can I can straighten my arms better if I put my hands facing forwards. Do you have any other questions for Akash? Uh, no. Okay, buddy. Thank you for your question, okay? Yeah, thank you. All right, Akash, I got one more for you, okay? Now, you've been in probably some big pressure situations in college and at JOs and probably at world championships. Is there one routine that absolutely stands out to you as the most exciting or the best routine that you've ever done in your life? And can you explain the situation and maybe try to put us there maybe a little bit emotionally and understand the excitement? Yeah. Ooh. So there are two routines I would say that, um, that really, really stick out to me. And, uh, so the first one was in 2000, 15, yes, my sophomore year of college at the NCAA championships. Um, so it was, you know, Stanford, it was, it was Oklahoma's year. They were, they were killing it all year. You know, they were beating teams by 20 to 30 points. Just absolutely. They were, they were by far the best team there. Um, but at NCAA championships, anything can happen. You know, who knows? Uh, if you put some pressure on another team then they can crack. And so we had started on vault where we did pretty well. We had four good routines out of five. Um, and then we went to parallel bars where our first guy went very good routine, stuck the dismount. Second guy went fantastic routine, stuck his dismount. 
Third guy went. Even better routine. Stuck his dismount. Fourth guy went. Beautiful routine. He's he's known for not sticking dismounts, and he stuck his dismount. So I was the last guy up on parallel bars, knowing that okay, if we can if we can really you know do fantastic on this event, get a good start, and be a few points ahead of Oklahoma, maybe maybe we can uh, really you know show them that we're we're here to fight. We're not giving it up, and maybe they might crack under the pressure. And I think that Pearl Bars routine might be one of the best routines I've ever done. Uh, and it was it was really just it, it it felt like magic. I felt like I wasn't even thinking. Um, I just knew that the guys before me had gone boom, 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 four in a row, perfect. And I just knew that it was it was my turn to just do a perfect routine like they did. I didn't even have to think about it. Stuck the dismount. I think I had the highest score that day by four or five tenths, and uh, that was that was just a great feeling uh, to have a whole lineup just basically be perfect. Um, my next one is is kind of a whole competition. Uh, and it was this year's or this past year's 2019 World Championship Team Finals. So we had just come off of prelims two days before, where we pretty much had a disastrous day. I had one fall and about a half on another event. Yule had one fall. Sam had almost four to five falls. Uh, we just, you know, we had a very bad day. We were in eighth place in qualifications and top eight make team finals. So we just barely made it to the finals. And, you know, there were already articles being written about how Oh, USA just wasn't prepared. They didn't. They didn't come in prepared. They're not a good team, and uh, we we should forget about USA. Then we come into the finals, saying, "Hey, this is a brand new day. Uh, we know what what caliber of team we are. We know how hard we've worked for this and how much we deserve this." And so we went out, and we had the best competition I think I've ever seen from a team. We didn't miss a single routine, and I think we had maybe one mistake that was that was a noticeable mistake. You know, some guy bent his arms on a giant coming out of a Kovacs. Other than that, it was an almost flawless competition from all of us, and we, we ended up fourth, you know, which isn't even a medal, but just to know that, you know, we had the ability to come back and, and show what we were capable of uh, is – you know, it was it was something that I never will forget. And again, that was another competition where um, I was very, very nervous to start with. I was the first guy up for USA on the first event on vault. And, you know, in the back gym, I had, you know, I, I had warmed up about three vaults and the first two were just not good. I fell. The third one was good enough i landed on my feet and stayed up but it was not great and so i was you know pacing back and forth at the end of the vault runway like oh man i can't ruin this this i'm the first guy up you know i have i really have to have a good start and um you know as soon as i saluted started running i just i just kind of melted away and did my routine and i i had the same feeling on just about every other event you know i as soon as I started moving on the event, I, it was it was over. I I knew I was gonna hit. I just had to focus in on the details and and make it the best routines that I've done. Akash Modi, right? One of the best gymnasts in the country right now, an even better guest, and honestly, an even better role model for our gymnasts. I wish you and your family the very best. Okay, I look forward to shaking your hand someday. All right. Yeah, anything? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. This was really awesome. And it was great to meet all of you guys. I got to watch a little bit of your warm up beforehand. And it really looks like you guys are working very, very hard. And that's, that's honestly very inspiring to me. Just knowing that, you know, there's hundreds and thousands of other gymnasts out there uh, pushing themselves in such a hard time um, and really giving it their all when, you know, it's, it's really not easy when you're not in the gym with your teammates, um, with your coaches and having that kind of motivation, you're still motivated enough and love the sport enough to, to push yourself and, and give it your all. 
Akash, do us proud. Absolutely. Rep Thank the, you. Six, rep the United States. Best of luck in your pursuit of the Olympic Games. I look forward to working with you in the future. Definitely. Thank you very much. Best. Take care.